add to that, there was kind of a lack of, I think, like enthusiasm from you guys when we were at this part of the textbook last time. And I don't want to see that happen again. Um, Cause like, it's so easy to start falling behind like really aggressively at this part of the textbook. If you're not kind of staying on top of your stuff and like asking questions and doing your homework and like actually being a participant in the class, like it gets, it gets pretty hard. Uh, chapter 20 is kind of chilled out, but these last two chapters were like kind of nasty and introduced like a lot of new stuff. So, okay. Um, oh, I'm going to talk about chapter 20. Okay. Cause we are like technically moving on. Chapter 20 is really just the fourth declension, like that's about it. So that's like awesome. Y'all are good at declension. The fourth declension is like especially weird. But we're gonna do a little more practice on chapter 19 today and tomorrow, and then we'll start chapter 20 stuff uh, tomorrow. That's y'all's homework. I guess I forgot. Didn't I write it up here? It's on page in the textbook 165. So it's page 165. Those first five exercises. And like passive voice isn't gonna go away. Um, so you need to be good on passive voice. Chapter 20 is a breather in that like fourth extension is easy as far as new things go, but like you still need to like be aware of the passive voice and like be ready for it when it shows up. Uh, and we'll do a chapter, that's wrong. No, yeah, oh, that's wrong. A chapter 20 vocab quiz on Friday. And I'll show you that vocab in a bit, but let's look at the um, stuff. The, the homework sentences from last week. I'm going to do a fast version of the video I recorded for y'all to watch during the e-learning day. What's what's happening? Oh, that's okay. That's tomorrow's starting point. Got it. Okay, here we are. So I think on during the the course of this this one quiz, we see. Passive verbs that are just in the present tense, uh, as you can see here with the actual endings, as well as perfect passive that have the two different chunks. Right, they're using sum essa combined with a fourth principal part of the verb, and you're having to translate these with like was verb or if it's blue perfect passive had been verb. If it's future will have been verb. I know it's not like a broken record. Like I feel like y'all have heard me talk about the passive voice, like describe it to you briefly, like this, like a bunch of times. But I, I need to keep doing it because so many of y'all were not able to like pull it together for this quiz. What? I guess, but you're literally missing the answers to the quiz that I'm about to give. I know all the Okay, I guess. So, okay, this is one of the homework sentences. It could be on the quiz as far as Bailey and, and Carly are concerned. So it's the judge. That part's easy in the subject. And then we start a relative clause um, almost immediately. So this is kind of the weirder way to start a relative clause and that it's technically starting with this preposition, but that is a preposition that quote is an object of. And yeah, basically I just need you all to feel like really comfortable and like be honest, like right now, if this isn't the case, that you can look at this and maybe it helps to know it's from Caro Ferrari right? because it almost doesn't look like it's like from a verb. Like I don't think we're super used to this verb. You need to know this is perfect passive as in perfect tense, passive voice, whereas this is present passive. Raise your hand if you're if you're like, you know what, I don't really know how to do that. Or like, do you like try to, in the least boring way possible, break that down for me again? Anyone? Remember these present passives, as well as imperfect and future, they have like a form, like it's a specific ending to, to achieve their passiveness. Okay, it's, it's like our restore many or more many of these right here, right? And you kind of add the endings that are like the, the sequences of letters that you would expect to add to make it an imperfect future. Whereas the whole perfect system passes, they, they use forms of sum essa plus the fourth principal part. So that's why they're always in these two different parts. So it's just like the judge by whom the judgment has or was has been or was prepared uh, is present tense overcome still passes by work now. Okay. So both of these are passive voice. I had some people tell me something was active voice. Guys that when I'm asking the voice of a verb, like the answer is going to be passive. Maybe now that I'm saying that so much, maybe I will eventually ask the voice of an active verb. But it's one of those things where like me asking about it should almost give it away. Like I wouldn't be asking. All of our verbs up until chapter 18 were active voice. Okay. Uh, and then we have two different kinds of ablatives. So I still, even though I, I said like don't, on the quiz it says don't like don't tell me object of a preposition for function of quo or yeah, quo here. So people still said object of a prep. 
Um, so yeah, I know it's the object of off. I think we all know that. It's if we buy mm, or whatever. But you, I wanted that's me prompting you to tell me it's an ablative of agent. So that's when a ablative that's like a person is expressing what the, the passive verb is like performed by, whereas ablative of means, we don't even need a, need a or ob with it. And we whip out by, and that's expressing the, thi the thing, the thing, not person, that like performed a verb. Any questions? Uh huh. Yeah. And can you like turn down the heat? I think like one or two. Okay, this is the one that I don't like. Okay, but but the direct object whose family has been perfectly passive verb, I have never seen. It is as if I'm trying to like do that in the most Latin word order, like the way it actually shows up there. Um, and yeah, so like whereas whereas this is perfect passive, this is blue perfect passive because erat is like the, the past tense form of est. So it had been protected. All right, but it won't be on the quiz. This one, um, by a citizen who to Greece had been sent, peace and liberty were praised. So you really have to change the word order here or else it does not come together. But yeah, guys, the subject is buried, okay? It, it, this is weird. You, like, like I just tried to demonstrate, me going left to right here, like trying to keep left to right, it doesn't work. You really have to like understand what's happening and then like change the word order drastically. The subject is buried after a relative clause. I would start there though. Peace and liberty, right? Has been or was praised. Perfect tense, passive uh, so voice. And then you're ready for the, the, the first part. It was, it was praised by a citizen who, starting a relative clause, had, blue perfect passive, been sent to Greece. So here, I would want you to tell me that this is blue perfect tense, passive voice, whereas this is perfect tense, passive voice. Y'all see the difference here? If, if laudate, as soon as we wanted that to be blue perfect, it'd be like laudate erons. It would have to have this past tense version of soon as a, uh, instead of just soon, which is just, soon by itself is like they are, right? It's just the third, it's the plural version of S. And Kiwa is an album of an agent because the citizen was a person. All right, any questions? All right, and then this one, this one's really hard. It's not, it's not on there either. Um, what to the author has been said or was said? Dated there, real trick. To whom uh, these these favors have been given? Perfect tense, perfect tense, passive voice, passive voice. S and sent are the same verb, right? Since it's just the plural version of it. Usually that's is, usually this is are, but in this context, it's like telling us it's perfect actually. So you want to use have or has or was or were. Because it's perfect since here. Any questions? All right. Weird y'all don't ask me questions and never get it. Elizabeth? No, like this is me. I, I, it's still, it's down to four, but I basically, I'm like, I'm narrowing it down. But no, uh, I mean, you already took it, so you know, You're, it's gonna be the same. So y'all, y'all, anyway, like, we're gonna take it the last 10 minutes of class. I'm, a, so I'm hoping y'all all get like A's now. It'd be weird if you still struggled with it. But that would that would show me that we like, definitely need to practice more than just today and tomorrow, which we are gonna practice a little more. Uh, this one, so a lot of had flowed. That is a blue perfect passive. It's another blue perfect passive, because it's, when you see the ERA, you think like, perfect in this context. Um, yeah, where this is just like blue perfect after. That's why, that's, so I'm sorry. This is blue perfect, that's had flowed, where this is had been mixed, because it's blue perfect passive, where this is just blue perfect active, had actively flowed. It still sound weird to me from the rivers, and uh, had been mixed with the huge ocean. All right, guys, chapter 20, like I said, it's a bit of a breather. It gives us a chance to like, continue to take in the passive voice and relative clauses, which won't really go away. But I will say relative clauses kind of go away. Like in another couple chapters, then it does disappear. Because we get like much harder stuff, much more interesting stuff there. But this chapter, we do get the fourth declension, which I don't think you need to write it down necessarily. It's, I'm sure it's, if the homework is on page one, um, 65, then this is probably written out on like page 163. As you can see, it's very U-based. Plenty of you former, like, yeah, for, uh, OG 2.5 kids, you already learned this thing. So this isn't like, this is fine. But 1.5 kids, don't freak out. 
okay, it's not bad. Um, it does show us that now we have three declensions that can technically end in U.S. and the which is kind of crazy, right? Like we always knew second declension could do that. We have a few third declension words that do that, like tempus and corpus, find the body. Uh, and now we have fourth declension words that can do that. That's why it's so important that you're looking at a genitive form of a word to know what the question it actually belongs to because it's like just us that could be second third or fourth declension. um the weird thing about fourth you get is that just like a normal us will be nominated as singular but then us shows up three different times with a macron over it so if it's a macron us that can be genitive singular which is weird but you can differentiate from subject form there or it is nominative plural or accusative plural so that's not really like anything we've seen in any declension i don't know what that's like right like it's doing the thing that first and second extension do where the genitive is the same as a nominative plural, right? Like an, like an apostrophe S versus just like an S S. So that, okay, we kind of have a precedent for that. But then it does a third extension of a neuter thing where the accusative just mimics the nominative. And so that, that long US basically, it can mean three different things. It could be singular, possessive, or plural subject to direct object. That's crazy. But um, UE with the long I for dative, that's not too, I'll, we'll talk about you in a second. That's for neuter fourth declension, but the long I, that's actually, it's like a third declension kind of dated, I think. U-M, yeah, of course, a why wouldn't it be that? And then a long U, yeah, sure, okay, Ablative loves to use long vowels. Uh, and the plurals aren't bad. Instead of U-M, like it's, it's very third declension-y basically. Uh, instead of just U-M for the, the third declension that I admittedly hate, the genitive plural in the third declension, it's U-U-M, okay? So you won't get this mixed up with the accusative. And then Ibis, okay, we're still using Ibis, so Ibis hasn't gone away. The reason you're saying this long U and all these endings, that's what neuter fourth dimension nouns do. We, I think we only get one neuter fourth dimension noun this chapter. And then they get UA for their plural subject and direct object. So cornus, horn. Horn is neuter. So cornu, as you can see there, cornu with a long U in the nominative. That unfortunately could be subject, indirect object, direct object, or ablative. But it's not a big deal because it's not going to show up that much. Like, how many sentences could the textbook writers write with the word for? You know, what else? Oh, we do get knee, genu, anus. Can anybody think of a word you get with genu? So, genuflect is like a really big word that no one uses for kneeling. It just means to kneel. Okay, conierati is second to clinton. So, I got some old declension words here for conspirators. Fructus fructus is fruit. Like, high fructus corn syrup. That delicious stuff that shows up in all sorts of horrible beverages. Manus manus is hand like manual. Metis metus is fear like I don't know what. Mons montus, their defense is mountain. Synopsis synopsis is senate. Saints is saints is feeling. So as you can see, you're getting this long U.S. showing up in the genitive. Alyssa, how are you feeling about the, the fourth declension? Okay, that's good. Your posture with the, your back turned to the, the projector has been a little concerned, but if you're taking it in, that's, that's all that matters. You're hearing it. So communist, communist, third defense have to be common. We get these words that either mean right, right-handed, left, left-handed, or this one could also mean like evil. So people who were left-handed 2,000 years ago were evil, um, as they continue to be. You know, like, I think, isn't it like most U.S. presidents are left-handed? Or like yeah. were? Yeah, who's left hand in here? Okay. So we got the whole area back there, and then Adrian, interesting. Y'all are going to be presidents and or evil. Correa, guys, Correa shows up. Oh my gosh, is this a chapter where we get out of separation? No! Okay, no, it must not, it must not be. But it means to laugh. Ooh, I think it is. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's really not hard. For some reason, y'all make it seem like it's hard. Defendo is to defend. That's easy. Descato, it's easy to forget the part. Odi is to hate. It's a broken, defective verb and that it's like always looking like it's perfect tense. It basically is stuck in the perfect system. Prohibeo is to keep. Oh my gosh, this is that. Okay. We'll talk about Aldo separation tomorrow. Pronunciation is good to pronounce. There's your fourth declension. This is a more, it's like just the fourth declension here instead of all four of them. All right. Oh my God. No. Well, okay, uh, we get some really easy ablatives here. Okay, they're easy, and it's your fault. If you make it complicated, that's your problem, because this is so easy. We get something called an ablative, a uh, place from which. It is weird that they can use any of the three prepositions we've known to sometimes be translated as from. That's kind of annoying, but that shouldn't be hard. So this is going to be like the Greeks, 
They what is Navi Gavara to anyone? Seo. What tense is it? So is it the Greek sail or sailed? Sail. Sail. This era. This is perfect tense. The Greek sailed a uh, patria sua. Anyone? Hmm? It's not ad patria. Ah, from ob. Uh, so it's by with a passive verb, but here we just have an active verb. So then sail by something. Yeah, yeah from. So so our ob can still be from. Just because ob started to mean by in the context of a passive verb sentence, it can still be from, just like they and X can. Why are there three froms in Latin? I don't really know. It's kind of crazy. Uh, the Greeks sailed from their own land to Italy. So this demonstrates how odd or ad, let's just say ad. Ad is to, like going to a place where our ob is from. from a place. Okay. And then what is this? What do you want from us? Okay. Oh, okay. And then we have something called an album of separation, guys. It's not a big deal. So that's album play from where? That literally takes no brain cells. Uh, this takes only like a couple. So like even old men, something about fruits of wisdom and plans and, and certain arguments often. Oh, okay. Videntor. All right, so what about old men? Old, they don't see. The old men don't actively see something. It's Videntor. So Videntor is what voice, Elena or Cora? Because if it was Vident, it would be the old men see. But it's Videntor. So it's active or passive? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the old men. Huh? That would be changing the tense. We want to change the voice. It needs to happen to them. No, they're not seeing anything. They're not actively seeing it. They're seem passively. Seem to be. Yeah, so seem is the way to do it. But like, because video is kind of unique. A be seen, like the old men are seen is the way to do it. But yeah, video or videri, uh, you probably want to go with seem instead of like to be seen. Um, but yeah, so the old men seem to lack. This is a new verb. What do they lack? They lack uh, fruits of wisdom and, and certain arguments and plans, okay? And so what kind of ablative are fruits and certain arguments and plans? It's this thing called the ablative of separation. Um, big whoop, I guess. Like It only shows up with this, this verb, correo, to lack, prohibeo, to keep out, and libero, to free. And so it kind of feels like after lack would be a direct object, right? Like, oh, I, they, they seem to, to lack a direct object. But instead, we get ablatives. That's the things they're lacking. So that's all that's like slightly weird about it is that it's it's like it kind of feels like a direct object but it technically is this certain kind of ablative of separation and it's just like words like lack prohibit or keep out prohibeo and free like free something from an ablative of separation they're going to take this out of separation because uh -huh. they, they kind of set up a sentence to have something show up that is the object of a word like from in this case they are not the object of from uh, so sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes they're the object of a or ob. Sometimes though they're just like the object of a verb like to lack. Okay, we'll, we'll practice it more. It's really not that bad. There's a perfect tense review, I guess, for some reason. Let's not do that. And now, so okay, this class is at 25. So I need to remember in a little more than 10 minutes, we're gonna, we're gonna give all the kids who need it a quiz time. But let's do a little more chapter 19 practice. So this is the kind of practice that can help you with the quiz you're about to do. OG 2.5 kids have probably done this story before. But at least OG 2.5 kids, we're getting really close to the area that is uncharted for you. So if you're feeling like looking at the word, like if you're afraid to admit it because the culture of your peers is very like anti-knowledge. But you're secretly kind of like, you don't necessarily like Latin, but you like, you don't want to like repeat the same Latin lessons over and over again. Well, then don't freak out. We're getting close to the new stuff, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, man. Am I really short one? That'd be so weird. Really? One? Sorry, Adrian. Adrian, I want you to be awesome. All right, this is about the judgment of Paris. Then we read, we read like the, the wedding invitation too. 
the, the wedding where the judgment of Paris happens. It's between Paris's, no, it's between Achilles' parents. And now this is like, this is the sequel. The Dea Discordia Chrysola ad Nuptias. Nuptia is, or Nuptia, I think it's always plural, it's like wedding. Uh, Pelii of Peleus, Pe, uh, yeah, Peleus. Peleus, how do you say his name? Peleus, Peleus. And Thetis, um, non erat vocata, from vocal vocare to call, era mota est. Mota might look crazy, but that's from moveo moveri to move. So we get words like move from the first two principal parts, but what words do we get from the fourth principal part, like motus? Motus, mota, mota, anyone? Means to move. Hmm? Uh, maybe motivation, but definitely is more simply, yeah, motor. Yeah, motor is good. I was, like, I was gonna say motion. Yeah, motion. Motion or motor, good. Uh, anyway, so the goddess discord, and then we're starting a what kind of clause are we starting here, Cammy or Carly? The goddess discord, quai. Yeah, relative clause, good. How should we translate quai, Carly, or Sarah as who, which, or that? Yeah, probably who. Like, we could probably say the goddess witch, blah, blah, blah. But it's a person, so that, that's like, this is a, oh, example of, we could just use who. The goddess discord who, um, alone, where's my actual verb? Oh, it's all the way back here. Now, guys, I want you to be warned about this. I think all the examples we, we've seen of perfect passive verbs, the fourth principle part is to the left of the form of sumessa, but it can technically be flipped like this. And that is sure hard to like spot if you're not ready for it. But this is from Boca Vacare. What tense is it, Sarah or Bailey? Is it perfect passive, plue perfect passive, or future perfect pass? Good, it's plue perfect. If it was vocata est, that'd be perfect passive. But it's vocata erat, so it's plue perfect. So how so it's not that the goddess discord calls actively. It's actually perfect tensedly or plue perfect tensedly. Huh? Has been called would be if it was non est, but it's a rot, so she had. Had, yeah, yeah. So it had been called. Okay, good. The god of Discord, who had alone been called to the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. I'm using purple for my perfect passive for some reason. Uh, and then Nuptias is just an accusative object of add. Uh, yeah, can it? Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, it's kind of important, kind of crucial to understanding the story here. Thank you. I'll probably have to keep adding that. So we have a nice color scheme going here. It looks kind of vaguely eastery. That orange is kind of weird, but maybe I like it. Uh-huh. Um, well, so oh, weird. Yeah, that makes it look like almost like an Irish... It looks um, Celt Celtic. What are you? In? What are you? In? All right, and then what? So era mota est. So if vocata erat non was plu perfect passive had not been verb, then like Cora or Elena, what tense is mota est? If I were you guys, I wouldn't even know that mota est was a verb. But I'm telling you that mota is from moveo moveri to move. So it's not plu perfect passive because it's just mota est, not mo mo mota erat. So it's was. Anyone else? Perfect. Yeah, just perfect. Um, so you know she had not been called, but what about her? Like this is all like a disruptive relative clause. At the end of the day, the actual main clause, like the sentence itself, is just the goddess discord era mota est. So the goddess of discourse, what? How do we translate mota est? It's not that she actively moves something, Elena or Luke. It's that she was. Goddess discord, perfect and passive. What, Luke? Not had, though, because it's not blue perfect passive like Okata. So, not had, but, huh? What? You can use was. Yeah, maybe we should just use was because has is so, you can use has, but has is so close to had. Maybe it's better to use was. So she was Mota, anyone out loud? She was moved, era, by anger. That's an ablative of agent or meat. Yeah, it's not capital I, it's not like the embodiment of anger, and there's no ah, so it's probably just ablative. So 
Uh, she is. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on here? Oh my gosh. It was. It was. I guess I'm still because that happened on the Jeopardy like two weeks ago. I'm still getting like I'm getting perfect pass and mixed up with present. That's not good. So she was moved by anger, but has been moved by anger. Technically, is good too. Okay, let's do like one, maybe two more sentences, then I'll let y'all retake the quiz. All right. So yeah, we got a blue perfect passive in the relative clause, and we got a perfect passive in the main clause. All right. So yeah, the goddess of discord is really mad. Iyakit, that is just from Iyakio Iyakura Iyaki. So what tense is it, Adrian or Keaton? If Iyakit is from Iyakio Iyakura Iyaki, what tense is it right there? Third singular. It's the first word we're seeing. We might as well just break it all the way down now. Third singular. It's like he or she. And what tense? Very straightforward. Because it's from Iyakio Iyakura Iyaki. So and it's present. Featuring in perfect form that has an I and an A. It only has an I and an E. I shouldn't put the dash here. When it's one of the three. Anyone? Yeah, it's got to be perfect. Like, you should be able to see that it's like coming from the third person part. So it's going to be here, she threw. And obviously, we're talking about Discord. So she threw or has thrown, therefore. And now, okay, do, do, okay. so this is confusing. Malin is apple. It looks like the act for like people, but it, it could also be the noun apple. Aureus Atlum is golden. Um, so what? We'll do we'll do the in quo part at the end. That's a good relative clause. So she threw, therefore, in regium. Oh, this is weird. Okay. What case is regium, real quick, anyone? It, it's from regia for queen. As accusative, usually when n takes an accusative, it's in two, but she's not throwing something into a queen. Um, so toward, you can do toward, but that is a little weird. So she threw, therefore, toward what? So what kind of queen, Braden? Or what the queen of what? Immortalium Deorum. Immortal cats. Yeah, and then what would case Dan or Braden are in Immortalium Deorum? Uh, They're not. Regium's accusative. These are, no. it's, it's, it's like EM third dimension and Orum second dimension. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, they threw toward the queen of the immortal gods. What did they actually throw, Alyssa or Sadie? So we, we've taken on the first five words, so six. She threw, therefore, toward the queen of the immortal gods, Malum Orium. I mean, you can apple. put a, oh, what kind of apple? Yeah, so, yeah. So that's the actual direct object. Um, whereas, like, the immortal god here is just possessive of Regium, which is the object of him. So towards, towards the queen. And then in quo. I'm trying to say in quo. Think outside of the box beyond just, like, in. Because quo is going to be something like which or whom or something. But we're probably talking more about the golden apple, right? And we're talking about something that was street tied on it. So is it going to be in quo? Who can translate that? Anyone? Cammy? Pretty, pretty good, but just tweak in. Because like if... I wouldn't like write something in an apple. I'd write it. Yeah, yeah. So on which, good. On which scrape tie errunts. I think Cameron already like basically did this, but scrape tie errunts. What sense? It's definitely passive. Anyone? Scrape tie errunts. Huh? It's actually just perfect. Well, I'm sorry. It is blue perfect. Yeah. Okay. The glare is making it look like it could be E or U. Yeah. Good. Sorry. It's blue perfect. So on which. Had been written high literai, and then it's like colon. So, yeah, these letters. Good, good, exit, very good. Yeah, because plurality these had been written these letters. Okay, and then we'll do this next thing, and then I'll probably give you all the quiz. Except for those six kids who just went hog wild on it. <laughs> Bellissima. So, you guys will get. You'll find out in chapter 26 that adjectives actually have a second and third level. They have a comparative, like, there's good, bonus, and there's better, which is a weird, it's melior. You'll get that in 26. And then there's best, and that's optimus. So there's bella for beautiful, bellior for, like, more beautiful, comparative, and the superlative, most beautiful, bellissima. And so, but, like, what, 
what case because it doesn't just the apple say most beautiful. I mean, y'all probably know how this myth goes. What case could it be there so that like you can maybe add a pronoun? Uh -huh. First, it could be on a plural, just like the most beautiful, like subjects. What else could it be? You are, you're on, you're on, yeah, could be, so it could be like of the most beautiful. And if it's dative, what would it be, Lucy? Yeah, so four or two, like two still works, but like this is actually a good place to whip out four. We have this thing called the dative of purpose, which we never talked about, and just like every once in a while, a data will take four instead of two. This is one of those cases where four is actually probably a little better than two. So it's like four, the, the, the fair is fair. That's a little loose, but that works for like for the most beautiful. Um, let's do this one, and then yeah, we'll do these next two little small ones. Kui malam dari debit. So um, I think this is like the narrator. Like nobody's talking at this point. It's not like Paris is like saying this. What what can we translate kui as just in a vacuum? It's the dative of kui kui kui. What case is or yeah, I just said it's dative. And we might use which or that here, but what if it was whom? So it's for the fairest. And then this person is asking not just whom, but the data. Anyway? Yeah, to whom, good Dan. To whom, um, dead bed. It's never oh, it's more like sh should to whom should the apple dari? So from dar uh, do dare. Be given, it's a passive infinitive, good. Just with that long eye to that, so, so to whom should the apple be given? And then who can just like, you know, just just translate that next sentence, then we'll take the quiz. Ion, Iunoni, out to a name. Yeah, Juno or to Venus, yeah. And they're actually all in the data, so it's like you can add to Juno, to Venus, or to uh, Athena or Minerva, either way. But yeah, the two is built in, because they're all in their, their data form. Minerva's first to clinch, but you know, you notice, and and weirdly Venus is third to clinch, and I forget that Venus is third. You almost would think Venus is like second, which is weird for a girl's name. Um, even Jupiter himself fears to make the judgment. All right, I'm gonna pass this thing out. So definitely have your homework put away. Parker and Luke, Dan, Chloe, Prudence, Lucy and Cammy can do whatever they want for the last 10 minutes. But hopefully everyone else will just kind of ace this. I could maybe see people still not being prepared, but I'm hoping y'all are all able to like own this quiz. But put your, definitely put your old quiz away, obviously, and put your old quiz away. Put everything away. All right, guys. And again, you can do one or two. Just pick one, I'd, I'd say. Just pick one. Um, and then do your best on number two. Oh, we didn't talk. Okay, that's good, though. We didn't talk about the spot translation. So tomorrow we're going to talk about the spot translation. And I probably need to explain ablative of separation better. And that's a wrap. Second period, cyber soldiers. You better, you better catch up, y'all. Y'all are falling way behind. Bye.